Welcome to the Matching Mind podcast. How do we start thinking about the boundary between emotional distress and the need to seek help from a trained therapist? How do we ask the difficult questions? Today, we're talking to Dr. Nandini Chakraporty, Senior Advisor to Matching Mind. Thank you for that, Vigner. And it's a pleasure to be in this session with Matching Mind, with whom I have a fairly long relationship now, it feels like home. So I'm Nandini Chakraborty. I am a consultant psychiatrist with Leicestershire Partnership NHS Trust in the UK. I work in what is called early intervention in psychosis or a first episode psychosis service. That is my day job. I also have an academic role as an honorary professor with the University of Leicester in the Department of Health Sciences. I have um, roles with the Royal College of Psychiatrists, the main one being that uh, I'm the national lead for recruitment into training in psychiatry. Where we draw the line between where the distress ends and an illness begins is um, you know, something to keep in mind. And the point is that this is probably turning towards clinical depression would be when people are complaining about their mood being consistently depressed. So even when people are distressed, when they've had the bad news, after a couple of days, they can still have fluctuations in their mood. They can still have brief periods when they are feeling better. Whereas in clinical depression, you have a more persistent state of low mood. And by diagnostic criteria, that should be lasting for at least two weeks and more. Um, People alongside the low mood complain of feeling tired, feeling unmotivated, not being able to find pleasure or interest in anything that they used to do before. So that's a classical triad of low mood, uh, loss, loss of pleasure and interest and tiredness persistently happening for at least two weeks, which marks out clinical depression. Alongside that, people also talk about a lot of negative feelings about themselves and their future. So it goes beyond the situation which is stressing them in trying to deal with the situation of having a close member of the family who is terminally ill or going through a difficult treatment. Um, people um, you know, also have negative feelings about this is a catastrophe. Everything's going to be um, you know, bad from now on. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Blaming themselves, having a lot of guilt, feeling that they have you know, missed a lot of things in the past. They uh, have a lot to answer for. Um, and, and that becomes all pervasive. They see nothing positive in their lives in the past or the future. Um, then it starts affecting their function. So sometimes in spite of the distress, people do manage to get to work. They do manage to do their daily activities. They do manage to do uh, the very basics of you know, keeping going. Whereas as it becomes more clinical depression, they start to struggle to do even the basics. Um, people can complain of low confidence, low self-esteem, low concentration. One of the very particular biological markers of clinical depression is what we call early morning awakening. So people have short sleep, they have poor sleep, but they typically wake up earlier in the morning, at least two hours earlier to their usual sleep pattern. So somebody who usually work, wakes up at seven o'clock starts waking up before five o'clock, so on and so forth. And uh, the mood Yes, it's persistently depressed, but even within that, there are worse troughs and the worst is first thing in the morning. So early morning awakening, along with mood being worst thing, you know, first in the morning, other negative thoughts, having this negative thoughts encompassing everything in their lives. It's persistent. It's going on for at least two weeks. That's when we start thinking that this is probably turning towards something else. And that's where the thoughts of self-harm and suicide need to be explored. The other point I would like to put forward is that nobody puts the thoughts or the ideas in another person's mind 
by explicitly asking about suicide. That is a myth. Sometimes when people are worried, they want to ask about whether somebody is feeling suicidal, but they worry that if they were not feeling suicidal, asking them about suicidality would put the idea in their minds. And that's not true. So if you are worried about someone, if it's going to that extreme, then by all means, do clarify, do ask the question, and you would be you know, uh, delving into a risk. You would be keeping somebody safe. You wouldn't be putting an idea in their mind, which was not already there. Problem solving is a model which is very practical, which helps people to find solutions uh, without without it being suggested to them. And and there, you know, to start with the problem solving model where uh, you can gently put the question of, you know, what do you think is wrong? What do you think the solutions might be? If this is not working, what else can we try? What are the options? Okay, can we think about an option of perhaps visiting your GP if you don't want to see a psychiatrist? You know, what are the pros and cons? So within problem solving, we first identify the problem. We identify the cause. We identify options in a brainstorming kind of way. We look at the pros and cons of every option. We try to find a solution which is smart, we, which could be one of the options or a combination of options. And then we have a time period to come back and review what has happened. If it has worked, fine, we continue. If it hasn't worked, then we go back and we uh, try to find another solution. We um, suggest another um, method over there. So in, it, there's lots of uh, material on six-step problem solving on the net as well. Um, and it's a very simple model to use even in our day-to-day -day lives when we are burdened by lots of problems or connected problems in a situation where we don't know where to start. It's quite useful to step back and think, okay, so what is the main problem over here? One thing is stemming from another, from another. Let me identify what is the main problem statement. And from the main problem statement, then work down towards options and finding a reasonable solution.